everyone, I am Ashley Williams. I have some extraordinary news and some still unfortunate news. We're also going to be covering the overall Twitch situation, the Commander situation, along with the Iron Mouse situation, along with the Twitch that TV situation. If you don't know who I am, I am E. E, obviously, Commandy Security Officer of the team. I am Ashley Williams. Let's do oh, live to my overall news studio. Yeah? Hello, everyone. Long time no see. Uh, I wish I could play games right now, but now's that time for a gaming or reaction mood. So, first off, I want to overall talk about the commander's certain nerd condition. As I'm sure all y'all are quite worried and even bothered about what has happened to our beloved commander. Obviously, e, there's a lot to go over currently right now. So, let's get started. The commander was dealing with a lot of attackers, and technically two of them at formerly just a few, ooh, if not less than 24 hours ago. Currently, right now, both attackers have deleted their accounts. That would be Wolfheart and Avery. These accounts have removed themselves from Twitter slash X. They're gone. The attackers have fled. As the commander's health condition did something to force them to flee. They realize that they have done and now have overall, and I quote, abandoned their attempts at trying to destroy the commander. Uh, please allow me to take a drink of my iced tea as uh, I had to go to the store because the commander only has soda and it's really, really something. Yes, I did better cuffs. Anyways. Uh, according to everything that has gone down. To understand where these attackers' origins come from is to understand the individual that started it all. There is a certain content creator on YouTube that does reaction videos and gaming videos. We have nothing against reaction and gaming videos when we use strings of it, or at least the commander does. It's because of this overall sick to play individual, oh, that misunderstood the situation, he went on the attack. This person's channel is known as Devin Foxy Remastered. It seems Devin Foxy Remastered is a person that is in constant contact with children. These children tie beginning the community discord. As I will bring it up, I'm more tech savvy than commander when it comes to you, obviously, discord. So, I will attempt to overall go into the settings. And go over, er, obviously, the individuals that were blocked. To understand this is to understand the situation that was caused.
by this individual and the negative repercussions of their actions towards us. Now, it's been a while since I've accessed this tour. Are you freaking kidding me? They must have a huge out there. Ah, uh, here we go. All right. So, oh, there is. Wow, there was more that was in. Hold on, I will bring in uh, a. A window here. Okay, there we go. All right. So to understand what's going on, these are the individuals that were uh, sent by Mr. Foxy. Now he has stole one on, or a skip old one one Y or skull O Y. You have the Iceman Pringle Dylan, uh, this one right here, and I realized that I was so there. Uh, you had somebody that tried to be, uh, be a commander. This is someone that is obviously overstepped their bounds and trying to steal his identity. You have Slurp, Mr. Beast, and somebody that tried to copy uh, Joey's count. Are, are you pretty kidding me? So it seems these users were all banned from the Discord. Um, and they're all a part of the Devon Foxy Remasters community. It's because of the Devon Foxy Remasters community that each and every one of these attackers started hitting the Discord. This special app I developed through a Unique website overall protects the Discord. I created a special website with a special security feature to obviously protect the Discord from these invaders slash attackers. These attackers have been stopped constantly and banned by the overall algorithm. This program I made as I am a freelance programmer. I make security programs, and I made this for the commander. The security program um, has several protocols to make sure that these individuals are properly punished without old obvious mistakes or flaws. These individuals were properly banned as they were putting up images of, uh, and I quote, improper manners. Now, the attackers that were on Twitter slash Acid two of them were from the remasters camp. This individual old sent the land of the commander after a Twitter account claiming to be Demon Foxy remastered. Obviously, we're on the attack. When you're online and you fall under attack, you need to cover your attackers. Because if you don't, other news people with our news teamers will cover it for you and give the wrong information of what's happening. Now that y'all understand and where all this originates from, let's talk about Commander Stark condition. He's currently in the hostel. Oh, obviously the doctors are keeping him over the weekend. So Commander won't be back home until somewhere around Monday or Tuesday here at the apartment. 
I will have to say that his condition has stabilized. But they're doing further testing on his overall mental state of what caused this anxiety slash stress attack that almost implemented a heart attack. The stress levels were through the roof as these individuals were responsible. Now, both of these accounts have been deleted. They uh, retreated and deleted their accounts and chose to obviously leave the commander alone at this point in time. Right now, you have a donation goal for hospital bills. As the donation goal, the commander's uh, insurance is the uh, company. He, he doesn't have the money to cover the insurance. And we would appreciate anybody and everybody that would donate during this. I know this asking a lot of new people. But he needs this, obviously, to pay off the hospital bill. We also have a Christmas giveaway a bit donation goal. As the one had this goal, Matt, for obviously Christmas, we want to have a Christmas giveaway each and every year. So that's going to be surprising. After all, it's Christmas. And what better way to celebrate Christmas than in a little giveaway? We haven't sent out a overall um, amounts yet. So we're gonna go with false eyes channel. Now uh, there's a there's obviously a lot to cover with false eyes. He's a good man. He's also very well diverse. And we're gonna go into the reactionary video. Me and the commander rely on a lot of obviously other VTubers for information, especially the commander. One of them is false eyes ID. Now the commander's situation has stabilized, but he's not out of the woods yet. I will have to see what has happened to him is the child see release the attackers have fully played. You'll be returning around Monday or Tuesday to live streaming, hopefully with some stress medication. Let's begin. I should say that earlier. The commander definitely needs more uh, vegetables in his apartment. Plus, leave me eat some fruits. And so I did not receive any tests to see if something was in my system. We only suspect my drink may have been spiked due to how sick and horrible and drunk I felt after only two drinks, even three to four hours out from leaving the bar. I felt very wrong and overall not okay. I was in a terrible headspace and honestly should not have been tweeting and I apologize for anyone I may have worried. Thankfully my friends took care of me so I am safe no matter what caused me to feel that way. Clotho also sending an update saying Hades, Apollo, and and I are fine. I went to the 7-Eleven to make sure we all had water. I love my goddesses and will not let anything happen to them. Hades further updating. Thank you so much to everyone who has checked up on me. I am eating now after sleeping for a bit. I had woken up and was throwing up stomach acid nonstop, but I am okay now. I love Apollo so much for pulling me out of that situation and keeping me safe. Due to this, though, I will not be attending any parties unless they are controlled. And the I will have to say, Paul is a very handsome man. Look at that model. You see where my inspiration came from for my model. 
It was very important to have it, uh, reflect in the, the, you know, psychic users. And I had to be really, really cute looking. Well, you're cute, psychotic, uh, psychic user. And when Commander made this model, the first one, it was really, really weird looking. But, uh, he, further light, obviously, modified it for yours truly. And I really do appreciate that you did that. I wanted to have a cutesy with you and we're all like a VTuber model. And, uh, well, he did it for me. The people are known. As for drinking, I won't be doing it for the rest of the trip besides bottled beverages. This all also bringing us over to the undead goth moth, Imuiki, responding to Hades with, I was also roofied last night at a VIP party that hosted by Blurp, a service that offers sounds, on-screen emotes, and AI text to speech for creators to use on their streams. I'm safe and okay, had a wonderful group of friends to help me. Stay safe, gamers, and cover your drinks. I've been roofied before, so I knew the signs. I couldn't move my entire body for a good 40 minutes. Thank F for the friends I have, but genuinely F Blurp for having drink covers and not giving them out. I'll talk about it when I get home more, but I'm just shaken up and pissed. My friends had to carry my limp body back to the Airbnb when we just wanted to have a nice party. Do better Blurp. Orca Whale VTuber Orca Chan also chiming in, giving their Blurp party statement, stating very thankful that everyone I know who did get roofied was all with friends and got home safe and was around good people. People. I was fortunate to have well, noticed sure my drink was roofied and only had sips hands. as it was in water. I'm very thankful for my friends for helping me Even get home safe and trying to keep me calm. I feel so upset and mad at whoever did this to me and my friends as my friends weren't so lucky and didn't notice and got the full effect. I really hope next year they do better at keeping the parties more secure and actually keep to the guest list as I'm sure whoever did this was someone who snuck in. Imoiki also providing a further statement regarding this 2024 Friday TwitchCon Blurp VIP Party. Saying to start with, this was mostly a VTuber party full of larger creators who were not wearing their usual facial disguises and coverings. Meaning we all thought it was a safe space to vibe and meet other creators. And it was for a little. About two hours into it, the party started getting a bit more crowded. And I remember thinking I didn't see this many people on the guest list we had all registered for. I.e. the security to a VIP party was S. One of my close friends noticed their water tasted funny and only took a few sips but started filling off which I knew was most likely a low grade roofie. While waiting for their Uber with them I notified the security guard that she was most likely roofied. The security guard yelled at us for taking up the walkway. Shortly after she was picked up it hit me hard. Now for context I have been roofied before so I know how it feels but this was something much much more severe. Once I started feeling heavy and unable to read well I immediately ran to the bartenders who I befriended to let them know I had been roofied and to take precautions. I was informed at that point that they had drink covers and were not handing them out. My friends, thank God they were there, had to carry my limp, hyperventilating body out of the party, which was soon blocked off by the fire marshals for overcrowding. For about two hours after that, I would only move my mouth, mumbling, and my eyelids. My point in this is that it was a VIP party with major creators there who felt it was a safe environment to demask. They had drink covers and did nothing, and security was S, and started letting God knows who in after a few hours. They had a responsibility to take care of us and did not. My con was ruined and I spent the rest of it shaken up and scared to drink anything but water. Do better Blurp. Blurp responding to this and getting this VTuber's name wrong saying, hey Imuli, this is the second case we've heard of someone that got their drink spiked and we're so upset that happened to you and so glad you are recovering okay. Unfortunately, we did not have any drink covers for the party, nor did we communicate that we will have any. But at future parties we will be sure to provide them. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help you through this. This video for correcting them on Okay, yeah, um So Definitely seems over all they said there's no drink covers, but the VTubers could have sworn they saw drone covers. This seems this may be a security breach of some call, a security protocol breach by a uh, proper security measures. It's quite interesting to know that how reckless and possibly immature the uh, overall security officers were at this 
convention. Let's continue to watch the scene more. But, in the long run, I can't help but feel that each and every one of these individuals that were harmed by this situation, it may have been something more out of their control. In the long run, our heart goes out to all the VTubers that were uh, harmed in this situation. As all of us here of our see you next gen, we're all VTubers here, at least the three of us, and uh, Joey that shows on live stream with the commander from time to time. But despite all this, uh, we are hoping that each and every one of y'all are safe and you are fully recovered by now. After these tragic events, they're VTubers, our people as well. And they deserve our love and respect. Much like the commander, much like me and Gio. Behind the VTubers are people, and we deserve love and respect as well for all the hard work and content we do. On their name, and further saying, I'm not okay, and even without the drink covers, it was your responsibility at a VIP invite only party with several quote unquote big names to make sure the only people allowed in were on the list. Drink covers or not, this is on you. Blurp further responding, sorry, it auto corrected. Everyone that got in was manually approved by us and our sponsors. The venue capacity was 350, and we only let 325 on the roof, and at one point, 15 had to wait for others to leave to get in. There were no plus ones or otherwise that were allowed in without an invitation. We denied nearly 500 plus RSVPs for the event. There was security at check-in to get a wristband, security to get onto the elevators, and security to get onto the roof itself. We absolutely agree we should have had drink covers for all guests. As we stated in our direct message to you, we'd be happy to discuss options to make this right to you and any other guests that were affected. That bringing us over to the heavy metal elf goth news tuber, Alara, bringing on stream the Dinosaur King VTuber right now I will mention that um we have covered the heavy metal queen herself Aria before she actually does a lot of good work we also rely on her resources for news as well and uh oh oh look at that dino day oh. Oh, I know where you. Yeah, I, I know where you can punch that uh, huge overall bombing giant. Uh, oh, right, call fist, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, let, let's continue. I, I kind of have a thing for Red Claw. Red Claw, who had also attended this party and clarified many points, stating that this event was run by tech bros and not an event planner. This being evidenced by the head of Blurp mitigating issues during the party. Also clarifying there were two parties happening at the time. A post TwitchCon after party, allowing for general admission at 15 US dollars and bringing in 1800 people, and then a separate more exclusive VTuber party. That being the one that Blurp had said they had only allowed 325 people into. Red Claw elaborating that plus ones were not allowed, with many of the VIPs getting into this party thinking that due to them being approved, they would have a plus one. And in order to get in, you needed a QR code. However, these QR codes did not expire, meaning you could simply send your QR code to anyone and they could very likely get into this VIP party. Red Claw further confirming they were not checking bags, only IDs and for the QR code to get in. Red Claw adding a disturbing detail regarding... Okay, so security was definitely lacking. I'm guessing the overall security wristbands were updated after by a certain previous event. If this was the case, then more likely this is a failure not only security staff uh, on-site, but a digital security staff off-site. This means obviously this is June to fail miserably. If this was the way Twitch thinks these events should be handled or work slash Twitch, I don't know what to say other than a proper investigation needs to be done into what has happened. 
from the staff of the physical or on-site staff to that of the digital online staff. Of course, at times, the digital online staff can't cover everything uh, with these situations. But uh, it is a failure on digital or staff with the overall pure Q&A code. Uda updates along with that of the physical staff not checking bags. Or even that of items being brought in. Meaning that somebody kind of women just brought in a, an overall bag uh, filled with some kind of substance. Or even more so that of maybe like a cup, like a plastic uh, container or a cup full of the substance as well, where they can deploy it, it across like other individuals. This is truly horrendous and a horrible situation. Our hearts yet again go out to the individuals that were affected by this. Last year's TwitchCon in Las Vegas, stating at that event there was a group of guys prowling on girls. And now this year, those very same men had appeared at this VIP party for VTubers. Red Clock. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me there was a group of individuals last year that appeared at a TwitchCon. And they were uni on winning? Okay, so I will admit that it... <sighs> It's okay if you talk to women, if it's respectable, respecting, respectable, and respecting to their boundaries and personalities. This takes men reading on the sit with reading on the people in the room. You need to read on the girls before approaching them. Some women just don't want to be approached in general. This is this takes people reading on people in certain situations. This is a uh, definitely a uh, horrible old way to overall. Oh, just like when men do this, it shows a level of degeneracy and and competency. <sighs> I will admit, when I met the commander at the uh, overall old convention at the Kim and Sorbos convention in a town, uh. I was a bit reckless because I was excited. I didn't know there was a local VTuber in town, or I just moved into town. And I was so excited, I wanted to meet him. You know, I wanted to work with him, and I got that chance. I took a chance, and the commander made my dream come a reality. He, uh, he definitely trails me a lot in his knowledge and capabilities. He drills my brain, my soul, my essence to make sure that I'm proper in place and even that of doing my job effectively and correctly, not only as a news VTuber, but that of a was actor for the animations that we cover. I will mention the commander does a lot of video editing of these animations. He edits everything. He does everything from behind the scenes. And we rely on him a lot. Maybe too much because me and Gio, we have our own lives to live. But at the same time, he's the only one who demeans and capabilities of editing these videos in the time confirming that the fire marshal did show up at this VIP party due to overcrowding, and also further clarifying Twitch had nothing to do with this particular party. You can watch more on those statements with the link below. That as this weekend, Red Claw will be joining others, such as Akifei, Papa Mutt, and Prism, this Sunday, September 29th, for World Heart Day, as who had also attended that VIP party was Buff Pup, this werewolf VTuber showing off their Bleed Purple statue, achieving 5 million hours watched on Twitch.
Twitch. Pup Pup disparaging oh. this party as That's well. So Being told by a fellow VH Bond member, I Candy, that security was hard blocking those that either did not have 300,000 followers on Twitch or 3,000 concurrent viewers. That number later in the evening going up to 1 million followers on Twitch and 5,000 concurrent viewers. In the aftermath of this, VNU's Maeve Kagakiri remarking, if you're traveling to TwitchCon, please be careful. Please try to surround yourself with people you trust, especially when going to bars. Never set down your drink. Never hand it to someone you don't know. Always care spike drink testers with you. Always be mindful about your alcohol intake. It may feel silly, but it is always better to be safe than sorry. And returning back to the Mythos Girls, Apollo is here with Morning Sun Drops. You know, ignoring all that, I still enjoyed myself nonetheless. I've gotten closer with my Mythos more than ever and bonded. We're family now. I had yummy food. I dreamed to eat. I walked around signing people's cards, hugging and pictures. It was still amazing for me. I want to remember that part. So thank you really for making me feel welcomed here. Hades herself later the next day also enjoying her time at the Issa concert and also saying overall I'm glad I came to TwitchCon and seen friends and made new ones. But I am glad to be going home soon. I miss streaming and I miss my little community. Thank you for making my life better. Also with Mythos and at TwitchCon was Ares celebrating her balloon day at the event along with racking up 1,000 subscribers on her VOD channel. That is this weekend, Mythos is adding even more goddesses. The new wave entitled Arcanum beginning their debuts this Saturday, September 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Introducing us to Hermes, Dionysus, and Hephaestus. But we're not done with TwitchCon just yet as we have the Space Gardener VTuber Fumi attending the Sejam Slam Street Fighter 6 tournament at TwitchCon, receiving some congratulations from the Wazzler himself, Justin Wong, but also sharing this has been brought up quite a few times privately, so I'd like to address it this one time publicly. Unfortunately, yes, during my matches at Twitch Rivals, there were a few angles of the camera that looked up my dress. I'm not thrilled it happened, but it is what it is, and at the end of the day, I can have a good laugh about it with friends. However, I understand that being forced to be invasive to something like that can make others uncomfortable, and I'm sorry for any discomfort during the slam. At the end of the day, I don't want to point fingers or blame anyone. Mistakes happen, and I'm just glad it was me and no one else. I hope moving forward, things can be addressed by Twitch internally, so my peers aren't affected by something like that as well. That's all. Sajam himself replying, there's no need for you to apologize, and I'm sorry it happened. This is something I was planning to bring up in the post-event meeting. The cameras were terribly framed in multiple places for this. Fumi further replying, no worries at all. It doesn't affect my enjoyment of the slam, and these things happen for sure. As long as Twitch is aware, for next time, that's all I can really ask for, so thank you so much for taking the time to let them know. Twitch at their convention announcing that bans on the platform will be now more transparent, stating that in chat... Okay, so, oh, um... Uh, probably going into what seems to be the Twitch ban scenario. Uh, yeah, uh, we have the time on patience, uh, humblest apologies. I don't do live streaming much compared to the commander. An excerpt from the messages will be sent to the user in an email. Streamers will be sent clips of their violations so they understand why they were banned. And also, streamers and chatters will be able to appeal. This as earlier in the month, Twitch support was here saying, we're investigating issues with some payouts not being processed and delivered. This issue later being reported as resolved. As then, kicking off this week, were numerous VTubers being indefinitely suspended from the platform. These streamers being given the reason of a term of service violation, such as using stolen payment information to purchase Twitch bits and or using botted or stolen accounts to use Twitch bits. The violation occurring in purchases or payouts, VTubers being affected such as Harabel, Akira Virtual, Iden Rogue, Nox, Bribri, Wispy Witch, Trice Now, Pertato, Smoctane, Reina, Kanalita, Ingenios, Calamity Kira, Dino, and more. Noticing this trend was another news tuber, that being Lydia Nikazawa. Her Self being censored by Twitch for over a week, being warned that her streams contained actual themes, Lydia pushing back on that decision, and upon seeing these indefinite suspensions, saying, I'm seeing an insane amount of Twitch VTubers getting hit by quote-unquote using stolen payment information to buy Twitch bits today. Lydia compiling a thread of those who were hit, and that receiving the attention from Daniel Clancy, the CEO of Twitch, responding to Lydia with, just saw this, looking into it. Select other IRL streamers also 
also being hit with this error, such as Lamona Gogo, Panda, Sumi, and Kato. Twitch support later saying, we've received several reports of these accidental suspensions. These have now been reverted by the appropriate team. They'll be following up with affected users by way of their accounts associated email with additional information. Calamity Kira saying, I seem to be back, but with about 600 followers and heaven knows what else. Thanks, Twitch. I have my account back, but the lasting anxiety in me will never go away. No notice, by the way, just community members saying they see me again. As numerous other content creators have also stated, they did not receive any communication from Twitch that their accounts were back and that their payment status is still reading as suspended. That next, bringing us over to Shy Lily. This Orca VTuber sharing, I will be having an interview with the CEO of Twitch, Dan Clancy, on my channel. It will be about VTubers and Twitch. Let me know if you have any questions for him. Bow the Whale responding, why does it seem that VTubers seem to have different strictness of guidelines as opposed to face cam streamers? Beefy with, what is Twitch's response to VTubers that are leaving for other platforms because they feel like they're being targeted or treated unfairly? Numi asking, why was I banned in 2022? Skewchan asking, will we ever get the boobies back to art category respectfully v shoujo's giga with i feel like twitch's events marketing and anything yeah. internally run tend to focus on lifting up face cam streamers of many sizes and rarely feature vtubers who aren't the top two to three highest in ccv is there any plan or path to changing this and helping us integrate any better well cosmic dragon vienna is here saying i would love for more vtuber front page opportunities and events to be supported by twitch since a big focus on vtubing is expensive events debuts, animated music videos, and unique and creative content. These projects cost thousands and are all showcased on Twitch. That's turning us over to 3AM's Koki, tweeting at Dan Clancy and saying, Mr. Clancy, if I may, I was promised a front page slot on the carousel for completing the hype challenge reward tier last year, and your employees have jerked me around since January about getting this slot that my community earned. If I recall correctly, this was a level 8 reward, so it was very hard to earn. After months of drop communication, and empty promises, your staff was finally going to make it up to me by finally giving me my date on the 17th. However, that fell through somehow and I never got it. I even checked my analytics when it directly tells you what your traffic is from the front page carousel. I'm really disappointed because I was raising money for a charity for the Sato Dogs of Puerto Rico, a charity that's very special to me and I had been delaying this very special stream for months and finally got my date settled only to have it pulled out from under me again. I've sent two emails to your employees since last week about not receiving my slot and I haven't heard a word back. I'm beyond frustrated at this point. May I please request you directly look into this? It's been nine months. Thank you. I'm sorry I have to ask you directly and on Twitter of all places, but nine months of trying to settle this with your staff only has me left feeling helpless about the whole situation. Podge responding and saying they didn't put me on the front page last month during my slot either. And I did a huge nine hour event for that day. I know you put a ton of work into that stream and it's awful that you've been jerked around for so long. That is next we have V Shoujo's Iron Mouse, who even during the Hollow GTA event was still the top most watched VTuber this past weekend, and also being featured by Twitch. The platform creating a mini documentary that traced the journey for first dreams to big dreams to find out what goes into getting the bleed purple statue. Iron Mouse receiving a statue for 50 million hours watched on the platform, while with 5 million hours watched on the platform also is Sender saying thank you for staying by my side and giving me the chance to keep doing what I love, along with Lord Athelstan saying this was all way more than I deserve or ever expected. I'm lucky to have lived these experiences everyone has given me. Thank you, Castle Bros. Onwards forever. This all while last night, Iron Mouse has now broken her sub record, topping her total subbed record from last year's subathon, and still now at this time secured in the number four all-time slot. Iron Mouse at the time tweeting out, we did it, we smashed it. Thank you to my amazing community for changing my life. Longtime friend and man Manager Roxy saying, well done, Iron Mouse. You surpassed last year's sub count as a worm nonetheless. September is not over yet, and there is only one way to go from here, and that's up and over the mountain. Love you. Half the proceeds of the subathon going to the Immune Deficiency Foundation and also tweeting at Mouse. Huge congratulations to Iron Mouse for becoming the most subscribed creator on Twitch. So well deserved. Thank you for all you do for the primary Immune Deficiency Foundation. Mouse receiving tons of congratulations, including that even by Jack Septicai, saying congrats, you're doing amazing things. This all while Yoxic was here saying, can someone tell me why 200,000 people are subbing to a fictional character on his screen? The sweet being community noted and saying, although Iron Mouse is using a virtual avatar, the person behind her is a real human being.
human being and not fictional. Sea Dog VA replying, How parasocial do you have to be to care when someone has more subs than your favorite streamer? Shoto here with Iron Mouse donates to charities, regularly supports artists' livelihoods, and loves streaming more than anyone I know, all while being bedridden from her autoimmune disease. I hope more people can overcome their prejudice. That is a VTuber model and realize she's just a genuinely amazing person who deserves every single sub she receives. Pirate Software responding to that saying she's Iron Mouse and is currently running a subathon where 50% of the revenue goes to the IDF community. Support people doing rad S with their platform. Don't tear them down because you can't spend a second finding out who they are. Takahata here with all streamers are fictional characters. While Pippi Slayer would tweet, I don't know who needs to hear this, but VTubers are real people. Now, because imagine these people think we AI generated chatbots or scripted voice acted characters. If Kai were to use a PNG instead of a face cam, would that make him a fictional character? Lucy responding, biggest number good, slightly smaller number bad. My streamer should have bigger number than your fictional character streamer. While Rikami is stating, I see hate on VTubers all the time, but this one time irritates me. Iron Mouse getting hate is from people who specifically have never watched her. People being upset about success of another literally shows how ugly you are. That is beginning today. Twitch's bonus gifted subs promotion is on now. For every five gifted subs, Twitch will gift at least one. OBK to Cat noticing this and saying, Twitch taking the leaderboards in Iron Mouse's chat right now. While VGen is here saying big congrats to Salem Silent Grave on winning Iron Mouse's VTuber Academy. Also congrats to runners up Potastic Panda and Adriana Figueroa who will also receive 1,000 US dollars VGen credits. We're so happy to support your VTubing journey and can't wait for your next chapters. And while one of Iron Mouse's future models is currently being rigged right now by Suica on stream, that is Iron Mouse would also produce this rare doodle of all of the VShojo members. VShojo last night sending out perhaps one of their most confusing tweets ever. That being this upcoming event saying get ready for the first ever VShojo stamp rally. The image reading, collab with other VShojo members to earn their stamp and compete to see who can collect everyone's stamps the fastest. Giving these rules of collabs have to be live streamed for at least two hours long. Only one-on-one -on -one collabs will earn a stamp. Group collabs will not count towards a stamp. Only one collab per day will be counted. This event running from October to December and making many wonder if other VTubers could be a part of this or if viewers could be a part of this. The text of the tweet actually reading talents will be competing to see who can collect the most stamps the fastest within a 12 week period. Want to be involved? We'll be releasing digital stamps and cards on October 1st. But for further clarification, V Shoujo would say stamp rally will be a competition for V Shoujo talents only. The digital stamps and cards will be available on October 1st for you to keep track of each talent's progress. Talents such as Michi Mochivi now offering up this new model reference sheet that is designed by Raiju Nara. That model's rigging coming by way of Kevin X. While Michi would also credit dog VTuber Susu Awu for the real Michi. Susu saying of this model, this was so fun to rig and animate. And who is also animated this weekend is Vishojo's Kaysan. Taking part in the Tokyo Game Show this weekend with Sega while also going on to show off these behind the scenes photos of character inspired concoctions. That is, we're still loving the Watson concoction by Amelia Watson of Hall Live English. Recently solving mysteries with Fuwamoko and now posting up her final schedule. That before suspending numerous general activities at the end of this month. Amelia this Saturday on September 28th planning a ocean charity stream. The next day on Sunday, September 29th planning the final full Hollow Myth collab alongside a members unarchived karaoke to follow. As then this Monday, September 30th, Amelia will be holding her final stream and very potentially delaying our next episode. This whole ball YouTube's is here with the internet's favorite detective and shark girl make their U2's debut on September 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Set your alarms, the show will begin soon. Amelia also seen in this merchandise. All Live Production English tweeting out, commemoration merch for the chapter one of Ignomatic Recollection is currently under production. Offering up an acrylic diorama, cards, and the silhouettes of acrylic stands. Numerous artists celebrating Amelia with these movie references, including Aperture, Virtual Cuoca, and Azura giving us the quote, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Stating on stream that she had wished she collabed more with Watson, as they do share a lot of common interests, was Hall Live English's Oro Crony. Crony tweeting out, my second original song is dropping today, that being at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. As released last night is a brand new cover song released by the members of Hollow Advent, celebrating one year with Hall Live Device's Regloss, performing Shunken Heartbeat. Earlier, the members of Regloss celebrating the Advent one-year anniversary by singing Rebellion. Also, as a part of the 
follow Advent, of course, is Shiori Novella taking part in the upcoming Anime Impulse event. That's taking place in the Bay Area on October 12th through the 13th alongside Akai Hato. Meet and greet sessions now open for three minutes and 85 US dollars a piece. This is while Hachima is currently in America and posting numerous photos, being joined alongside best girl Rubiko. Rubiko tweeting out in both English and Japanese, logged into this world from a GTA amusement park and is amazed how close it is to Grand Theft Auto. Also with Hall Live Indonesia, we have Mona Hoshinova now celebrating 1 million views on the Hollow ID Gen 1 song from eight months ago and also taking part in Mermaid Festa. That song premiering with numerous new designs for all three generations of Hollow ID, including Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3. Gen 3 member Vessia Zeta also coming to us with an update, revealing that for now, that I really hope next year they do better at keeping the party. Metal elf goth news tuber Elara bringing on stream the dinosaur king VTuber Redclaw, who had also attended this party and clarified many points, nice. stating okay, that this okay. event was run by tech bros and not an event planner. This being evidenced by the head of Blur mitigating issues during the party, clarifying there were two parties happening at the time. A post TwitchCon after party, allowing for general admission at 15 US dollars and bringing in 1800 people and then a separate more exclusive VTuber party. That being the one that Blurp had said they had only allowed 325 people into. Red Claw elaborating that plus ones were not allowed with many of the VIPs getting into this party thinking that due to them being approved they would have a plus one and in order to get in you needed a QR code. However these QR codes did not expire meaning you could simply send your QR code to any Anyone, and they could very likely get into this VIP party. Red Claw further confirming they were not checking bags, only IDs and for the QR code to get in. Red Claw adding a disturbing detail regarding last year's TwitchCon in Las Vegas, stating at that event there was a group of guys prowling on girls. And now this year, those very same men had appeared at this VIP party for VTubers. Red Claw confirmed. And now we have. Gen 3 member Vessia Zeta also coming to us with an update, revealing that for now, she has moved to Japan. Artist Green T showing off Zeta's new home in Japan. Well, lastly, with Hall Live Indonesia Gen 3, we also have Kobo Kanaru. Keen Biscuit here with this animation, saying I animated the Bitaru bumper for Kobo Kanaru's collaboration with Honda. Thank you, Cover and AHM for the opportunity. This was the biggest project I took on, and I also designed the hoodie and custom Honda Beat. This artist later showing off the hoodie here. For Long, we're back with Sunny Splosion. This VTuber returning in October and saying, seeing everyone tweet about TwitchCon, I'm definitely going next year. And then further posting up this photograph, saying, look what I got. It's the old type. Guess I've had it for a while, huh? I'll treat myself to a new version when I hit 200,000 subscribers, and we're suddenly at 194,000. Thank you all for getting me so close to such a major milestone. And further along, we have Usan. Earlier this year, taking part in the 3D concert Invincible Melody with Shoto. Usan now tweeting out about this event, hello, I just wanted to follow up because I haven't received any compensation from Phase of Euphoria. Additionally, I have also covered a significant amount of expenses that you were originally supposed to bear. However, including a warning letter I sent, it's kept ignored. It will mean a lot if you can proceed with your payment. That not stopping this VTuber saying, I know my words would be twisted anyway, so I'd rather address them by singing. Going on to release yet another song entitled The Epic Vocal Battle War Against Zunchan Chan has begun. And now we have the VTuber agency Phase Connect announcing new 3D debuts. Phase Origins has broken free, oh no. Get ready to meet their small but mighty selves in full chibi glory. Join the fun on September 28th, this Saturday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern for their 3D chibi debuts. Also with Phase Connect, we have Himimi Arie racking up 75,000 YouTube subscribers. And later this weekend, on Sunday, September 29th at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, revealing a brand new outfit, saying here's a silhouette if you want to try your hand at predictions, hashtag he may drip. As also soon to show off new drip is Wild Spice with Oshi Link. This demon idol receiving this announcement, your local whole demon Wild Spice is coming out of her cocoon with a new look. Now with legs, this model 2.0 debut occurring this Sunday, September 29th at 1130 Eastern, 830 Pacific. And while we have production Kawaii's Shiicho now celebrating becoming a Twitch affiliate, we also have the captive hag, Kamisol Corzette, now hitting Twitch. 
which partner? Sox Agency saying congratulations to Camisole for hitting partner. So while this VTuber is currently running a partner celebration subathon this week, as it was also celebrating was Idol ES's Taiga Toragami. Now releasing a brand new cover and receiving a belated birthday drop, Idol here with get a specially designed Taiga shirt, special voice pack, even a special message celebrating Taiga's birthday all month long. And with Astroline, we have Alfioda. Astroline recently sending out this happy birthday to their beloved Valkyrie. I'll be saying today we celebrated my birthday. There's a lot of celebrations due to me moving, but I'm glad I can spend it with I love you guys. Thank you for all the gifts, subs, and well wishes, and for accepting me as the weirdo I am. That birthday also being celebrated with new merchandise, including a full-size Ducky Makura, mouse pad, and mini Ducky keychain, all now available for a limited time. Also kicking off this weekend are brand new debuts from Specialite. Those debuts beginning on Saturday, September 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, and yes, also occurring on Twitch, these second-gen debuts lasting a half hour each and culminating in a collab stream at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. And we're not done yet as we have Lily Bell, the airline mascot VTuber, saying, I'm going back to the skies for a while. Thank you so much for flying with Lily Bell Air. Announcing an indefinite hiatus beginning on October 14th. Last stream being on Sunday, October 13th, as the fan Discord server will be closed midnight that night, and the YouTube will be archived at the same time. Lily Bell beginning their VTuber journey June of 2020 and saying, thank you everyone for understanding, for supporting, for caring and loving and being there, and for those who have become my friends. And we also have the Crow VTuber, Aria Corve, also announcing a hiatus. That last stream scheduled for this Friday, September 27th at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. This Crow saying, thank you to all my friends and fans who have made VTubing incredibly fun for me. I love you all so much. And let's not forget Fluffin debuting this weekend on September 28th, asking for this debut, what should they show first, with 44.7% responding, feet. And now with even more things VTubers say, we turn to our co-host, Lady. Thanks, false. Cool Banshee and Ranch lover, Eros Valentine, makes their debut on Friday the 13th, with not only a new model, but being able to get on Twitch's front page. With their model art illustrated by Nami Shiron, this Banshee doesn't just have a cute face, as they thank everyone so much for coming to their debut, hosting I can't wait to keep haunting your hearts and laugh even more together. That while also being taken back, having them address this issue by posting, why do more of you want to kiss me in my monster form than my normal cute girl form? Illustrator and light duty modeler Diariku releases not only a new outfit, but cover debut with their new look shown here as they release their first solo cover, that being the vengeful one with animation done by Cedar along with MV done by Rumski and the instrumentals done by Gremlin Wearing Echo, Obi Katie Cat. Ocean Gate Keeper, Faithy Fade, releases a undercover project, that being the Underwater Archives, with parts 1, 2, 3, and 4 now out. With Faithy posting, I love all the confused comments on YouTube as the Underwater Archive story unfolds. 1950s diner waitress Miss Lala reminds you to mark your calendars, as they will be dedicating an entire week to celebrating their birthday, starting September 25th. As Miss Lala officially starts their Viajita era, receiving lots of birthday fan art, but also getting surprised as they were featured in one of Figma's big screens made by Twitch. Cozy wholesome gamer Silver Veil, in collaboration with Mon Amirai, in publishing their game Pocket Waifu on Steam, has now recently achieved overwhelmingly positive reviews. That as Silver Veil would go out to reply, This is so surreal, I never could have imagined we would get so many nice reviews. I'm so flattered and so glad people are enjoying it. That's that as good. there will be new updates coming, as Civil Veil vale goes out to post, I can't wait to see where it goes in the future. Miori Celesta announces a brand new design update and re-debut announcement, as they would like to emphasize and clarify that their cape is still of average girth and length, and to not make fun of them. The singer and voice actor Jubiphonic announces that they will be voicing Kano from Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night for the English dub, now streaming on High Dive.
Live, while also releasing a brand new English cover, Summertime, in collaboration with Numi, with the music video done by Sky Akame, Jiggly Whale Girl Bao. Thanks everyone so much for over 1 million views on the Bikini Bottom's first original song, Miss RGB. Posting It's Already Been Two Months, we poured our hearts and souls into this project, and I'm so glad that it resonated with so many of you. That as Numi would also go out to post, happy 1 million views to Miss RGB. Never felt so happy and proud of the girlies. I love them so much. I'm grateful every day knowing I have such amazing, talented friends in my life. That's all for me. And now back to you, False. Thank you so much, lady. As that is all for this episode, as always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Send in your VTuber news to our Discord as we'll have more things VTubers say for you soon. Yeah, by tape. <laughs> Restart. 1950s diner waitress and V. Uh -huh. blah, 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 blah. Why? Why? Restart. <laughs> Restart. There shall be no booba here. Booba? Booba balls? Sniff? Why did I sniff? Why did I sniff? What? Restart. Sure Restart. 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 We're both girls. Restart. Yeah, Restart. Both <laughs> Restart. As they emphasize, this <laughs> is I bit my mouth. Restart. As they emphasize. <laughs> Restart. Sorry. Restart. I think that's good. I think we're good. Okay. Restart. Announces that they will be the English dub actor. <laughs> Restart. No boobies allowed. Bye, boobies. I'll miss you. Restart. What's up, y'all? It's OJ. Cookie Run Tower of Adventures is here. And with Google Play Games, I can sync the game from my phone to my PC. We have the, the egg ball size. It is true for everything they do, obviously. Ah, uh, thank you for joining the Ings there in the C News Network. I have been Ashi Williams, and... I will keep y'all up to date if there's any more information that happens with the commander in his heart condition. I will also mention that thank you all for choosing to obviously join us here in the Sea News Network. And see you general as we want to continue to entertain all you. The commander will be coming back either Monday or Tuesday when the doctors release him. I will also be making my own Twitter account today. It won't have the chat mark yet. As I'm going to have to obviously ask the commander for a little bit of cash because I lost my job while I was in protective custody. So I'll be relying on his help for a while. As he's a good man, and I hope he recovers soon. Maybe I can get a few, like, obviously, um, program commissions very soon. Only um, for, like, security programs or something like that. Who knows? I work with very specific clientele. I don't work with a lot of clientele online. I work for, like, B or, like, business corporations or banks or whatever for like security programs they're very hard to come by but at times they do contact me i've been ashi williams of c news network and i hope all y'all can enjoy what's coming in the near future tomorrow i i guess i'll have to do something for the commander because like obviously i Really don't want to do uh, much gaming. I like doing the news and covering gaming news and like VTuber news. That's one thing. But I did recently create a, um, and I float for my account with my own PSI. And I implemented the account on the commander's PS5 as well. So I will be. Yeah, playing Fortnite tomorrow for all of you. And I'll give y'all further updates on Commander's condition as they develop. Thank you for joining me here today. He has a lot has been mentioned. And I hope the Commander covers a lot more faster than we suppose it. But Right now, all I can say is we will wait for the commander's return at a nice and slow pace. We want him to be at 
We don't want him to be at 90. We don't want him to be at 70. We want him to be at 100. Until next time, I've been Ashi Williams. And I'll see y'all on the next world. Bye bye. <laughs>